In this video, I'm going to show you how to generate a VGA signal from a Raspberry Pi Pico. Here's a picture of uh, my Raspberry Pi Pico. Comes in a little tray like this. Uh, and you I bought mine from buyapi.ca in Canada. So they're five, $5.25 Canadian, which is $4 US. So just a, a quick comparison of the Raspberry Pi Pico and an Arduino. Um, so uh, the cool thing about the Raspberry Pi is the clock speed of the dual core CPU, the ARM Cortex M0, it's 133 megahertz, whereas the single core Arduino, most Arduinos are only 16 megahertz. Um, flash memory and RAM are also much higher. The thing that's cool about the 133 megahertz is it actually allows you to generate a VGA signal. Now the reason for that is there's something called a VGA pixel clock, which is the clock speed that you need to generate a single pixel at a particular display size. So even at a small VGA display, 640 by 480, you need a 25 megahertz clock. Um, so the Pico can do it, but the Arduino really can't. So uh, let's go through the setup process. I'm gonna set this up on my uh, MacBook. Um, there's a document that you can download from the raspberrypi.org website, which takes you through setting it up on, uh, setting up uh, the compiler on different um, operating systems. So um, essentially what you need to do for, on a Mac is install Homebrew. I already had Homebrew installed, uh, so I had to update Homebrew. Um, uh, and then uh, install something called CMake. Now CMake is, essentially generates make files from configurations. Um, uh, then you need to install um, the ARM GCC compiler. Uh, so the instructions are all there uh, in the document. It doesn't take very long. Next, install Visual Studio Code and uh, configure the CMake tools inside. Once you've done that, you're basically ready uh, to um, get the um, uh, Raspberry Pi Pico examples and start to build them. So here I'll show you um, how to um, build and load uh, one of the simple projects. It's the Blink uh, example project. Um, so I'm just going to quickly change the project. So I'm going to change the, the, the speed that the um, uh, LED blinks at. Uh, so it's going to blink at a second kind of in interval. Um, and I quite like to compile things on the command line. So uh, inside the uh, Pico examples folder, there's a build blink uh, uh, subfolder, which is where uh, the builds are. Uh, um, run make and it will build um, uh, a, a fresh copy of that Blink example. And what it does is it generates a UF2 file and it's called blink.uf2. Now, um, to load uh, this uh, kind of compiled executable onto our Pico, what we need to do is plug in the Pico while pressing that boot button. And what this does is uh, it uh, essentially mounts a drive. I don't know if you saw that, but um, on my Mac there, a new, a new USB drive has, appear has appeared, RPI-RP2. Uh, and what you need to do is drag and drop the CF2 file, that blink.cf2, uh, onto that drive. The moment you've done that, uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico will disconnect from your computer. Uh, it'll disappear and it'll start running your project. So you'll see there that Blink uh, uh, project has actually started running and there the LEDs blinking at that one second interval. So now that we've loaded in our first project into the Pico, we're ready to start to build the VGA signal generator. To start this off, let's just draw a quick uh, circuit diagram. So this is the circuit for one set of GPIOs to generate one part of um, the color for VGA. And obviously you have this for uh, red, green, and blue, right? So this circuit repeats for each of those. And it's basically a five bit digital to analog converter. The problem that I have with this is these resistor values, um, I think 1K and 2K are pretty common. 4.02 and 8.06 and 499 ohms. Um, I don't, um, I have a big uh, tin fill of, filled with resistors and I've got nothing close to 499, uh, 4.0 or 8.0 ohm. So what I need to do is figure out how to make a 499 ohm resistor. What I have is a 470 ohm resistor and a 33 ohm resistor. And um, uh, these are all, um, see they're, they're blue, which means that they're 1%. Um, so what you can do is just put these in series. So the idea is just wrap their legs together 
uh, on one end and then you use these pins just become the resistor itself Let me wrap these a bit better and then um, what I can do is I can uh, I can measure what the resistance is of this uh, so in theory this should be 503 ohms um, doo -doo -doo -doo. there we go so 501 so that's very close to the 400 it's within one percent um, so um, that's pretty good so I'm going to make up um, three of these um, one for red, one for green, one for blue. I have nothing close to the 8 either. This is the closest that I have to an 8 ohm resistor, which is what? 8.1. And what I discovered is if I take these, so 8.1 is probably close enough. It's the, it's the least significant part, the least significant bit. Um, so um, it's not going to make uh, as much a difference as something like this 5 ohm, 500 ohm being being off. What I discovered though is if I uh, take these 8.1s and I put them in parallel, um, I should get a 4.05. A 4 so this gets me a 4.07, which I think is close enough. That's you know close to it's within one percent of of what that rating is. So that's a four. And then I actually have 1K and 2K. So this means I've got all the resistors uh, to, make, um, to make this DAC. So I've sped up this part of the video. Um, here I'm building uh, the resistor ladders uh, or the DACs for the RGB uh, parts of the signal. Uh, this goes pretty quickly. Now a note on the pinouts for the VGA connector itself. Uh, so this is the, the, the pinouts uh, for the, the female part of a VGA cable. One of the things I did was I bought some gender changers uh, so that I can put this on the end of a VGA cable and then I can put um, um, connector wires into the um, connector itself. And this just allows me to very easily connect that up to a breadboard um, circuit. Uh, notice also I'm putting in the H-Sync and V-Sync lines here and the ground. Um, a quick note on the H-Sync and V-Sync, there are two 47 ohm resistors here. They don't have to be that accurate, but you'll see they're on the board there. So just a quick note on where to find more information about uh, the circuit diagram for v the VGA output. Um, so um, the circuit that um, I'm implementing on the breadboard here uh, is borrowed from uh, this document that I found on the Raspberry Pi website which is um, a hardware design guide for um, the 2040, RP2040, which is essentially the Pico. If you get this document, there's also a full uh, schematic at the end. So this is the, the, the Pico itself. Um, and you can see the pinouts for red, green, and blue. Notice the order of these is slightly odd. So the order of the red is different from the green and the blue on the pinouts. And there's gaps and grounds in between, so they're not just all adjacent pins. Uh, and the other thing that you can get from this document is the actual uh, DAC, uh, VGA DAC for red, green, blue as well. I've omitted these switches, these input switches, um, but you can also see the VGA connector pin out there. Okay, now we're ready to program that circuit. Um, so what we're going to do is we need some libraries um, from the Raspberry Pi uh, GitHub um, repository. Um, so if you go to github.com uh, forward slash raspberry pi, um, scroll down, scroll down and look at some of the individual repos. You see the Pico examples and Pico SDK. Uh, you should already have those installed, uh, but keep scrolling and you'll find something called Pico Extras and Pico Playground. So if we uh, look into Pico Extras, this actually contains a library, which is called uh, Pico Scan Video. And this is an impl a VGA implementation uh, that we can use. And in Pico Playground, uh, you'll see Scan Video. There's a folder there. And then it contains a set of demos uh, that we can um, load into our uh, Raspberry Pi Pico and see what they do. Uh, so sync those uh, uh, repos down. Um, and uh, uh, you should be good to go. Okay, so um, once you've compiled um, those video examples, we're going to start with the Mandelbrot example. Um, you need to load it into uh, the Pico, and uh, it'll um, it'll activate the display. 
Um, so here you can see the Mandelbrot brought example that's running. Um, it's running at normal speed. Um, so this requires quite a lot of floating point uh, mathematics. So it's a little bit slow on the Pico because it doesn't have a floating point unit, um, but it can still do it in with integer emulation. So here's the same video um, kind of split, sped up a hundred times. So you can see the Mandelbrot set um, uh, forming and you know the colors. You know the, I think there's only 16 colors in this particular demo. Uh, but you can see it's it's working uh, really well. So let's take a look at some of the other demos. Uh, so this is a sprite demo, just kind of floating heads. Um, um, I think there might be a problem with my DAC because some of the colors aren't quite right there. Um, a text mode uh, version, so you can put text on the screen. Um, this is quite a nice um, floating uh, Raspberry Pi um, icon. Um, and again, this is uh, this is a horizontal scrolling. There's, a, there's something called the Mario scrolling demo as well, which is very much like this. So anyway, I hope uh, you uh, like watching this video. I really enjoyed making it. Um, if you like this kind of content, please hit the like button uh, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.